access to God. Getting that access, we say there are some keys. If you read through the Bible, you start discovering that there are ways that make God move faster. You move closer to God, God moves closer to you. And last Sunday we talked about the key of thanksgiving. And thanksgiving, when you can be like those ten lepers. You can stand outside the gate and call and call on God. And out of his goodness, God can hear you and me. But getting that intimacy with God, getting closer to him, you must be thankful. Be thankful for what you already have and then it will move God to do more. You remember we talked about Jesus. He had bread and, and, and fish. And instead of praying, he gave thanks for what he already has in his hands. And that just multiplied the food. So what you have, when you give thanks for it, it moves God to do more. So that moves you closer to God. Today we are going to the second key. And it is the key of praise. We say it with thanksgiving, you thank God for what he has done. But praise is not like that. With praise, we praise God for who he is. You see the difference. Thanksgiving, because God is good, he has, he has done good things for you. But with praise, you acknowledge the greatness of God. It's not about what he has done for you. No. It's about he being a great God. Is God great? Do you accept that God is a great God? That is the purpose. And if you praise him, it moves him. So we're going to read the scripture. King David writes in Psalm 104, 100 verse 4. Psalm 100 verse 4. Psalm 100 verse 4. And he says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So the key of praise it moves you into the courts. You see, the, the key of thanksgiving gets you through the gates. And the key of praise moves you into his courts. And, fr and from there you get full access to God. So we're reading. Psalms 22, verse 3. Psalms 22, verse 3. This is what my New King James Version says. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Can we get that in Luganda? Songa gwe mutukuvu mm. atudde ku ntebe era etendo lya Israeli yonna Praise the Lord Amen The Luganda says entebe etendo lya Israeli So when we praise God your praises amatendo go they build a throne on which God sits Gazimba na mulondo katonda kwatula Do you understand what I'm saying God sits on a throne. 
But for him to come and dwell in our presence, the words that you sing, the praises that you offer him, it builds up a throne. And that brings him to come and dwell on that throne. See, I think the Baganda can understand this better. When they get a guest to show them that they are welcome, they prepare a chair and clean it up and offer it to him. So I want you to understand this. Your praises, it constructs a throne to bring the presence of God. So it's very important that we praise. And it is very important to understand everything about praise. Without praise, you cannot access the courts. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read one more scripture here. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. Actually, this week as I was preparing the, the sermon about praise, I had a very hard time because the Bible is so full of scriptures about praise. I actually discovered that the longest book in the Bible which is Psalms. It's actually titled after praise. Psalms means praise. So you understand for the longest book in the Bible to be all about praise. That must reveal something to you on how important praise is. So Psalms 106 verse 47. Mine says, Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles, to give thanks, you notice that word, to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible is saying, Bible it's like a prayer, go to get you out of those areas and gather us and save us. For what reason does the psalmist write? To give thanks and to triumph in your praise. So the purpose why God saves you is so that you can give praise. When we praise, we triumph. Now this word triumph I looked at it. I used to think it means victory. No, it doesn't mean victory. Triumph means celebrating an already won victory. So, when we praise, we are celebrating a victory. We're not, we're not celebrating in anticipation. We are celebrating an already won victory. On the cross, Jesus, he defeated Satan once and for all. And I told you your responsibility as a Christian is to celebrate that victory. It is to deliver that victory to the enemy and paint it all over his face. So imagine a soccer game. World Cup. If Uganda qualifies for World Cup and they go all the way to the finals and they win the game, how can Uganda celebrate that? The whole city would shut down. People will not work. They will spend a whole week just celebrating that win. That is what triumph means. When you praise, you triumph. 
You cannot triumph with a defeated attitude. Have you ever seen someone celebrating a win with a defeated attitude? No. So one thing that is vivid to me, there's a story I want to share. I have a brother, his name is Enoch. He doesn't like this story, but I'll tell you. Tonight. He visited UK and he supports Liverpool. <laughs> I'm not talking about Man U anymore. <laughs> now I'm talking about Liverpool in a good way. So he goes to UK and he comes back. He had bought a full jersey of Liverpool. He bought a winter hat, winter gloves, and a scarf. It's all printed on Liverpool. A nice shirt, sweatpants, socks and shoes. Everything is Liverpool. And that year, Liverpool managed to go to the finals. Liverpool I think it was Champions League Champions or something. League. I don't remember. And Enoch put on his full costume. In the hot sun of Kampala. And I, I was working with him. We were going to Silverton Gardens to watch the game. He was sweating all over the place. But I was proud of him just to call him my brother. And we were just walking on the road. I, I was feeling more proud than he was. He was anticipating a win. But look at the way he was prepared. Just in anticipation. We got to the place. The game started. It went so bad for Liverpool. Liverpool was beaten so badly. Now, Remember, when we were going to the match, I was really so proud of him. But when the game was finished, I looked at Enoch, and I thought he was the most miserable human being I've ever seen. He, was, he had that defeated attitude. He wasn't fitting in that place. Everyone started shouting at him. He became the problem. He was just anticipating the win. But it was defeated. And on that day, I saw what it means to be defeated. You can see it on someone. So when we come to praise God, you cannot praise God with a defeated attitude. Because you are not anticipating a win. You are celebrating an already won victory. So, just put that in perspective. When they say jump for the Lord, you don't even wait for them to say. You jump like Solomon. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is what gives glory to God. So, let me give you another scripture. Psalm 30 from 11 to 12. Mine says, You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. We are not going to read this in Uganda because of time, but I'm going to interpret it. So, so there is a change of clothes when you read in this scripture. God is taking off your sackcloth. Sackcloth represents mourning. 
Bad times. And the Bible is telling us it's giving you gladness. For a purpose. What is the purpose? My Bible says to the end that my, that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. So, when I read that thing, my mind was asking me, what is my glory? Because the Bible is saying, the purpose for the change of clothes, for God, God to, to take, take away your sadness and your sorrow, to give you gladness and joy, is so that your glory not his glory. Your glory may do what? May sing praises to you. So what is the glory, your glory? That is the question we are going to answer. If we understand all these things, we will understand how to praise God better. So I found this scripture. In still Psalms, I told you, if you don't know how to praise God, you can start by just reading Psalms. You can read a Psalm and say a man and say, I've given God glory. Because there's a lot of praise going on in Psalms. So, Psalms 16, verse 9. It brings back that idea of my glory. It says, therefore, my heart is glad, my heart. And my glory, you see, my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. So it is another thing bringing up my glory. Because that the purpose that God gives you gladness is so that your glory may do what? And then I found the answer. It is in Acts chapter 2, verse 26. The writer of Acts, he gets that same Psalm 16, verse 9, and brings it back. And changes only two words. I'm going to read it line by line. While you read the psalm, we're going to compare okay. to understand what my, your glory is. So you read Psalm 16, 9, 16 verse 9. And I'm going to read Acts chapter 2, verse 26. You, you start. Uh, Zaburi, Psalms chapter 16, verse 9. The Bible says, Therefore, my heart is glad. Therefore, my heart rejoiced. You see? Glad is replaced with what? Rejoice. Re same line. Uh -huh. And my glory rejoices. And my tongue was glad. You see? Glory, tongue. What is your glory? It's your time. Continue. Uh -huh. My flesh also will rest in hope. And this says, moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. So, the reason why this is important is that in Acts, they show us what your glory truly is. So your glory, ladies and gentlemen, it is what? What is the purpose of your tongue? To praise. The reason why you have a tongue is so that you can give glory to God. You are the only creature in the whole universe that is given that glory to talk. So when you talk, glorify God. Your tongue is supposed to praise God. The psalmist says, my glory will glorify and praise my God. 
So let me say that any use of your tongue that does not praise and glorify God it is a misuse of your tongue. Praise the Lord. Amen. Every word that your tongue is supposed to say, let it be a word that brings glory to God. Don't be that person on the village. The there is a musician who used the word. He said, I 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 and your tongue is your glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Kakati. there was a change of clothes in the previous psalm. Your morning can become dancing. Your sadness can and become yo, joy. But it happens through praise. Let's read this scripture in Isaiah 61 verse 3. This is the answer to all depression problems. If you've ever been depressed, the answer of depression is in the Bible. Isaiah 61 verse 3. It says to console those who mourn in Zion, to give the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for the morning, the garment of praise. This is it. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So there is a change of clothes. The word is saying put on the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. So that spirit of heaviness that is depression. If you feel down you feel low. You have everything. You have food, money, and good clothes. But somehow there's a spirit which is weighing you down. The Bible calls that the spirit of heaviness. And he's saying, put on the garment of praise. So whenever you feel depressed, down, low, sad, find a word that glorifies God. Sing a song of praise. I, I don't know how to sing. But every now and then I'll burst into a song of praise. And now God gave me a wife who is a, a singer. And every time she hears me sing, she looks at me like something is wrong. But it, it changes my mood when I praise God. I'm telling you, try it. Even when you're in your sitting room by yourself, just sing a song of praise. Say some words that glorify God. And your situation will change instantly. You see the dance moves, Mama Kennedy was dancing. You do them while singing. And the devil will there is power in praise. The Bible is telling us, put on a garment of praise. And the spirit of heaviness is out of the way. Hallelujah. Amen. So you're starting to see why praise is a, a very important key. But one thing which is very major is that praise, ladies and gentlemen, it is a sacrifice. I know sometimes you don't feel like praising. It's hard for someone to tell you that praise God and it will take away your depression. 
And sometimes you can't even bring yourself to, to say a word of praise. That's why the Bible calls praise a sacrifice. It is more important when you don't feel like praising and then praise. When it costs you something, you, you feel it's too heavy for you. In that time, burst out with the word of praise. It is more effective. So, Jeremiah 33, 11, it shows us that praise is a sacrifice. It's not about how you feel that I'll praise God only when I feel good. Praise God in your darkest hours. In your darkest time. Offer him a sacrifice of praise. Jeremiah 33, 11. It says, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who will say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good. You notice that word? That is why we give thanks. The Lord is good. For his mercy endures forever, even that second one. And of those who will bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. You see, the sacrifice of praise. For I will cause the captives of the land to return as the first, says the Lord. God is saying if you bring a sacrifice of praise, there's a deliverance that is going to put into you. So if you're feeling bound by any spirit, one thing that is so effective, ladies and gentlemen, it is praising God. Praise is a sacrifice. Don't let your emotions dictate to you when to praise. When, when you must feel like you don't want to praise. Say so let me give a sacrifice. And just praise you God. Because you're great God. You're a powerful God. And then you build a throne on which God's presence is going to come and intervene in your situation. Hallelujah. Amen. So praise is a sacrifice and in every season, every time, even, even when you've lost a loved one, even when things are not moving well, give a sacrifice of praise. I'm telling you, it's a key. It is a key. I'll give my testimony. When I was in P3, my dad, he was a man of faith. He had so many kids and he kept on adding more because God told him that bring them in. <laughs> so school fees was hard to pay. So it was term three, the promotional term. And I had never paid money for a whole year. And when we were going to do exams, they picked me out and chased me to go back home. I felt so bad. I started crying. I went down that hill of Mengo, if you know that hill from Mengo Primary, just crying. And I was imagining in my mind that when I get home and I tell my dad, he's going to get up and run and do something. So I got home I found him in the sitting room. He was reading his Bible. And I said, this is perfect. It's perfect timing. I said, Dad, I'm back. They've chased me away from school because of school fees. And he said, praise God. Actually, we don't have water. Put off your uniform and go get us some water. 
I felt like dying. Like he doesn't understand what I'm going through. But I want to tell you, he was offering a sacrifice of praise. And later on I understood that even though that year I didn't do the promotional exams, I repeated one class, but his praise it moved God from that year on I, never, I was never chased away from school he actually started sending me to very expensive schools one of the schools I studied in in high school it was more expensive than university but it all came from being giving praise. When you, I didn't understand it then, but when time went on, and that rubbed off on me. So, even myself, you will not find me scared. No, no, no. Mm -mm. So, parents, if you're here, it's important to practice acts of faith in God when your children see it, it rubs off on them. So now myself, you cannot scare me with any situation. I will continually praise the name of the living God. No matter what I'm going through. That is the sacrifice of praise. It moves God to intervene in this situation. So praise is a way of deliverance. You can write this down. Praise is a way of deliverance. When we praise God in faith, it moves him to intervene on our behalf and work out our deliverance. Number two, praise prepares the way for God's supernatural intervention. God does things that are impossible and he makes them possible. And sometimes he does it when you praise him. It, it moves him to, to unleash that supernatural power on you. Let me give you a quick scripture. We can read this one in Luganda. Second Chronicles Verse chapter 20, verse 21, it is showing us how the power of praise, how it moves God to work out things for us. So, in this scripture, King Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah at that time. And the Bible says the Moabites and the Ammonites and the, and the people of Mount Seir, they came to attack. It was a great, powerful army. And King Jehoshaphat could not win against that army. So when they gave him the message, he was scared. But he said, we have a living God. He called all the people of Judah into fasting and prayer. And when they were fasting and praying, the Spirit of God came over one of them and God spoke through him. He said, the war is not yours. I am going to fight for you. And here, where we are we going to read? It is that time when the war has started. Let us read it very, very quickly. Second Chronicles 20, 21. He appointed men that to praise 
to sing and praise the Lord. He knew the, the, the key. And he's also a king. It has occurred to me that these kings know the keys. King David, he knew all the keys. And he used them continually. Now King Jehoshaphat, let's read it. Mm. Mwebaze mukama kubango kwa gala kwe kubelele mirembe jona. My English says, praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. Mm -hmm. Gena maso. Abili mubili. Yes. Abwe bata ndiko kuyimba no kutendeleza. Mm. Mukama na ataiza abasajaba amoni. When they started doing what? Abwe bata ndiko kutendeleza. Praising God. This war was against them. They could not overcome it. But because he knew the key that moves God's supernatural power, he, he chose the praising team. <laughs> but Victor, but Esther, but they the Esther's. He put them in front. And he said, you start praising God. Now they are going, approaching. A very powerful army. But they are coming with a, a sacrifice of praise. And the Bible says when they started to sing songs of praise. What happened? Now God's supernatural power is at work. Uh-huh. 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 Who is overcoming them? Who is overcoming them? The battle is not yours. If you only praise the greatness of the Lord, it moves him to operate on your behalf. So the war is defeated. These guys are still singing. They don't even know that the battle is already won. They are continuing to to come. Let's read and finish. 23. Mm. Yes. Labanga bonna mirambo ejigude era tewa tewali wono omu eyawonyewo now listen wow these people abantu bano they go together bagenda wam and they made a collaboration and they said, let's go and attack Judah. But when Judah started to praise, the Bible says they turned against each other. The Moabites fought the Ammonites and they all fought the people of Mount Seir and they killed each other. Judah did not have to fight. They only had to praise the name of the living God. So when you praise God, he moves on your behalf. I would give you so many other areas where Praise moved things in a supernatural way. But because of time, we're going to speak over, skip over it. I gave you the idea of Silas and Paul when they were in jail. They beat them and throw them in jail. You can, you can write this down, Acts 16.25. You, you can actually read the whole Acts. And you see that Silas and Paul, when they were in prison, when they started to praise and sing hymns of praise, the foundations of the jail, they started to shake. And the, the bars were opened up. But when we see Jonah, this was very revelational to me. Jonah chapter 2. 
Jonah was in the belly of the fish. And he started to pray. He prayed. He mourned. He groaned. He was tossing and turning. This was his darkest hour. In the belly of the fish, he didn't even know whether he was going or coming. He prayed from verse 1. He was praying. God was silent. But when you get to verse 9, he changed his mind and he said, let me give thanks and praise the name of the Lord. When he started to praise, the Bible says God ordered the fish. So it is the praise that moved God. It is the thanksgiving that moved God. So praise is a key. Praise is a key that moves God. The question is, when should we praise? Is it in the morning? Is it at church on Sunday? At night? When? Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God that the Bible has every answer. Actually, these days when someone asks me a question, even if it's about technology or anything else, I first try to find it in the Bible. Because I've come to realize that this book here, it has every answer. It is the answer. So, Psalm 34, Verse 1. It, sa it says, Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. When should we praise? The king is telling us at all times. And he doesn't stop there. He says, his praise shall continually be on my mouth. So when should you praise at all times and continually and continually in the hard times. I remember our mom, Pastor Susan, when I was learning to drive, I, it was a manual car you know how manuals are hard to move. And every time I would drive her and the things get hard in that car. She always started to sing a song of praise. I think many people can testify to that. Yeah. Even when you're in the traffic jam, you almost made an accident, she puts in a song of praise. And I wasn't understanding that secret. Now, in every, continually, the psalmist is telling us all the time, Continually. So, some people confuse and think that praise is only when you sing. Sometimes you can just speak words that, that glorify God. Let me read one more. Hebrews 13 verse 15. It says, therefore, by him, let us continually, you see that word again? Let us continually do what? Offer the sacrifice of praise to God. This is the New Testament. In Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 15, he's telling us that continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. So praise is a sacrifice and it's most acceptable to God when it costs us most. You must cultivate a lifestyle of being giving praise and being thankful. So, when do we praise all the time, continually? 
And how do we praise the Lord? This is a major question. Because people, there's a lot of contentions about this. Different denominations understand it differently. But the ultimate authority is the word of God. So, how, what is appropriate to praise God? How do we praise God? Again, Psalms, Psalms 111, verse 1 says this, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. 111 verse 1. He one. says, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. So this reveals to us that praise must come from the heart. When you know that you know that that God is a great God. That the one you call upon when his power comes down there's nothing that he cannot do. And you believe that by faith. And you give glory to God. That is one way with a whole heart. And also some 150 verse 1 actually if you can go and read this whole chapter it says praise the Lord praise God in his sanctuary let's read it in Luganda very quickly I think it's only six. yes 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 Mutendereze katonda mchifoche mchifoche echitukuvu. Mumutendereze ne muguru liye eriamani. Oroko bilis. Mumutendereze orwebi koruabi. Mm. Ebida gama anyige. Mwuri delwa chitu mutendereze. Orwebi koruabi ebida gama anyige. He's a great God. For his God. works that portray his power. His Mumutendereze orobu kurubwe obusu mm. kiride. Mm. Oroko sato. Mumutendereze ne doboze liye kondere. Ne doboze liyachi? Liye kondere. Aha. Mumutendereze ne nanga eze nkuba. E nanga. Aha. Rokuna. Yes. Mumutendereze ne ibitasa. Mm, ibitasa. Na amazina. Amazina. Gama muna amazina. Dance. Amazina. Habamu anti bati okumoving <laughs> amunyomba ya mukama. <laughs> Moving is a sign that you are alive to praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Mumutendereze ah. nebivuga mm. ebye nkoba mm -hmm. nendere. Mumutendereze nga mukuba ebitasa. Ebitasa. Mumutendereze nebitasa ebivuga ennyo. Ebivuga ennyo. Eyange gamba praise him with clashing symbols. Ngena maso. Bulie kisa omuka kitendereze nga mukama. Kakati abo Luganda. Who and how to praise the Lord? If I can summarize Psalm 150, including the previous one, how do we praise? With our hearts, you can write it down. With our understanding, with our mouth, with our tongue, your glory. With our hands. With our feet. With dance. Our whole body. With various kinds of musical instruments. So, when you come to praise God, and they say jump. You can't even jump. Are you celebrating a victory that is already won? When they say clap your hands. Make a glory, a, a, a shout of triumph. All that is praise. You cannot praise God with a defeated attitude. 
When you're down. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the Bible. He's giving us keys. He has said, you hit the symbols. Play the harp. Play the guitar. Any instrument that you have, use it to praise the Lord. Use your body. Dance for the Lord. The dances belong to God. The enemy is trying to take them over. But when you're here, use your whole body. You know, I'm one of those people who never used to have fun just dancing. I don't, I, even, I don't like going to clubs. I've never really had fun with that kind of lifestyle. But when I discovered the power of praising God with dance, today Mama Kennedy has given me something new. You're not over. Wherever you come from, whether it's the Bible, is Bible is telling us. Rwanda, the Bible is telling us. The Bible has said, "Dance for the Lord. Sing for the Lord. Clap for the Lord with all sorts of instruments. That is how you construct a throne." which brings the presence of God down. Now, because the Bible has all the answers, it goes an extra mile to even tell us who should praise. Psalm 148. From 7 to 14, you can read it. I'm not going to read that. But I can summarize it. Uh, this verse, actually Psalm 148, it has diff about 30, I was trying to count, 30 different creatures that must praise God. And you are one of them. But in Psalm 150 verse 6, it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you have breath, if you can still breathe in and out, you have a reason to praise. Sometimes we take breathing for granted. But the purpose for you to, the reason why you are breathing, the reason why you have breath, is so that you can praise the Lord. But I want to thank God for this word, the Bible. It goes an extra mile and shows us who should not praise. There is someone who should not praise the Lord. He told us everyone that has breath praise the Lord. But then it also tells us someone who should not praise. Psalms 115 verse 7. No, verse 17. Let me read in mine so that we can move faster. Psalms 115 mm. verse 17 says this. This is the person who should not praise. The dead Hallelujah. The who the Bible is clear. It's saying the dead do not praise the Lord. Nor any who go down in silence. They don't praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor that the dead are the people who should not praise. Those are the people who don't praise. The dead are so if you're not praising God, you might be thinking you are not dead. <laughs> but your spirit is dead. The sign of death in the spirit 
someone who cannot praise God. Everything is bad. Life is so gloomy. You don't find a reason to praise. You see, many times you only think about physical death. But you know, God told Adam and Eve in the garden that the day, in the day that you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. And I want to assure you, they were dead. Their spirits. That is why Jesus comes and he gives us his spirit to awaken that dead spirit to be able to communicate to God again. So if you're not praising God, guess what? News flash. You are dead. But thank God that there is good news. There is hope. When you start to praise, when you start to praise, there is a transfer. There is a change of clothes. The sackcloth is taken away. Your mourning is taken away. God replaces it with gladness. And that moves God to work for you. Hallelujah. Amen.